Thank you so much for that amazing introduction. Welcome to our talk titled, How Intuit is Overhauling Legacy Engineering Practices at Scale with InnerSource. My name is Alisa Carpio, and I'm Principal Tech Evangelist at Intuit, focused on tech culture. And I'm joined by my colleague, Rocio Montes, Staff Software Engineer, Leader in InnerSource and Open Source. I create tooling and automation to make these two initiatives successful. Thanks, Rocio. Let's just, just jump right in. I'm not going to say let's jump into it, but let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, what if engineers worked as a community, as code stewards and not code owners? Mark Earls, the author of the book titled Heard, cited a study in New York between two high school, stu- uh, two high school schools that are close in proximity to each other, but also have similar socioeconomic conditions. The thing that's different about them, though, is that the test scores between the two schools were so different, especially in math. One of the schools had really high test scores, and so they looked into why. And what they found was the school with the higher math test scores, they found that the students worked on homework together and studied for their tests together. They created a community where each member was both teacher and student and where each felt supported and worked towards a common goal. So if you think about this, and we take the same principle of working and learning as a community, um, we know that that can be applied to mid-size and enterprise companies in the tech industry. Today, the pressure to deliver high-benefit, high-quality solutions with speed has led many product development teams, and I know you probably are agreeing with me, to focus on the short term with each engineering team delivering um, just their own feature. But what if we can imagine a world where we work as engineers in communities of practice, have almost no meetings, and are code stewards? We would probably hear something like this. On my first day, I was up and running and ready to code before lunch. Each team really understands the customer that they're solving for and the problem. Um, Our team gets to own our own mission, make decisions, and solve for that customer. We get to see the difference that we make, and I know I can make that big impact. And so that feels really great. But is this nirvana just the stuff of legends? And although I can't see you, maybe you can do me a favor and raise your hand if that community of practice, that world that I painted, is true for your organization. If it is, man, we'd love to connect with you and learn from you. Now, we do want to reach that nirvana, and we are at Intuit in a journey to get there. But today, to get there does have some challenges. Um, At Intuit, we have six big groups across multiple continents and multiple time zones. Engineers and other technologists focus on delivering solutions declared as priorities by their groups. We have aggressive schedules to deliver features, fixes, and products to millions of customers, And speed, yes, it's a necessity, but man, to get there, there are some challenges. So I'm going to name four of them right now. Let me just build this. Um, So the first is um, in order for us to enable work effectively, right now we are still in this journey to move from where code is owned by teams and and individuals to... um, to, to a more, and we'll talk more about the solution, but today, so many of our, so much of our code is still <coughs> owned by individuals and teams. And so there's a heavy reliance on these folks to actually, you know, do everything from, you know, answer questions you may have on that repo to, you know, allowing uh, or to doing reviews on your PR. Now, the weighting that is involved with that, especially when you have, you know, um, when you have disparate locations across the globe, can get in the way of really being speedy in terms of, you know, committing your code. And that actually sometimes leads to heroics for our engineers. Now, we also found that even though you could tell me, yeah, my repo, yeah, I've got it, like, you know, documented, we have found that the documentation lacked in so many of them, and it made it really, really hard to contribute. And finally, even though you may tell me that you have, that you're adhering to standards, we found that standards actually vary across the various um, organizations and teams. And so onboarding to a project or to that repo really was hard um, because you had to keep learning new rules, if you will. So how did we solve it? 
we solved it by taking inspiration from open source. And I'm going to hand this over to Rocio Montes, who's going to talk about our solution. Rocio? Thank you, Alisa. So yes, we implemented a solution um, that included an inner source model. Inner source takes the principles of open source into the enterprise environment. Inner source, it's a great tool to help break silos, encourage internal collaboration, accelerate new engineering onboarding, and identify opportunities to even contribute back to open source. So let's talk about what our inner source program included. When we first started to look at inner source, we discovered that many business units and team were already practicing some form of inner source. The logical first step then was to declare a set of unified guidelines that outline the one way that Intuit engineers could use to contribute to any repositories in our Intuit ecosystem. These unified guidelines included a document structure that every repository should have in order to be inner source ready. GitHub would automatically recognize these files and enhance the collaboration experience for engineers. Documents like code owners to quickly get those PRs align, assigned to a code reviewer, a contributing that MD to detail the rules of engagement with each repository, and the pull request template that gives every contributor a checklist to complete before submitting a PR. These proven to be really helpful in the contribution process. Additionally, we required having continuous integration and continuous deployment automation on each of the PRs, completed with unit and functional tests that was definitely a must. These PR automations gave um, contributors quick and useful feedback about the PR and the code that they are trying to merge. On the next slide, we're gonna show you that technology changes were not enough. We actually needed to set up our teams for success in this new world. So we actually needed to think that um, inner source is more of a mindset change rather than a technological approach. Um, we needed our teams to understand that internal engineers were now a first class customer and that with practice, trial and error, there were going to be that these frequent contributors that were going to become a trusted committer. It's a new role for us, a role with defined responsibilities to ease and optimize contributions from frequent teams. Now, uh, please go back one, Alisa. One more. Uh, one more, sorry, <laughs> there we go. At the heart of inner source, there are the code reviews. We implement a training for new engineers and existing engineers that teach them techniques to foster a healthy contribution environment when doing code reviews. We actually think that each PR is an opportunity for mentorship. It was also very important to get teams to agree on their SLAs for code reviews released and support, and of course, publish them in their contributing.md. On the next slide, we're also gonna talk about how we had to scale our efforts via influencers. When we first started the program, it was only Elisa and I. So we really needed to scale the efforts by finding passionate volunteers, engineers and leaders that already had a passion for inner source and were excited to see the benefits inside into it. Open source supporters were also great partners. When looking for repositories to get inner source ready, we focus on prioritizing the foundational capabilities needed for Intuit's technology strategy. Additionally, we look for services that were the most common and already had a big number of contributors. So we prioritize these repos and getting them inner source ready. Of course, we needed to establish a rewards and recognition program. Um, we're going to talk about more on that later, but rewarding early adopters was really important. So have I sold you on getting inner source implemented in your company? This would be the steps that you need to take in order to do so. You will for sure need leader support in order to provide you know, time for training of their engineers, time for their engineers to adopt engineer guidelines and make the technology changes. And like I mentioned before, you need to create a set of unified guidelines. Also identified your model teams. These teams that are going to be like I mentioned, foundational capabilities in each of the business units that you have. Conduct workshops to teach how to do inner source. We actually had workshops at each Intuit site and every chance we got, every conference, every event, there we were 
inner source, rah, rah, rah. So it's really important that you teach what inner source is. Um, on the next slide, I want to remind you that you actually need a group of people with different roles and skills. You need, of course, engineers and a product manager. Make sure that you have diversity on your volunteers, from staff level to early career team members, and you need to make sure that they actually can tell a story and can do it well. You will need to implement dashboards and metrics in order to share the progress and track the readiness of the repos, as well as the ability to find those most popular repos and the foundational capabilities. Tooling and rewards prove to be very useful in getting everyone excited about InnerSource. For example, we created the first time contributions. We recognize that all the benefits when we talked about the benefits of inner source, we were only talking about the benefits to the business, right? Um, prioritization, ease of um, releasing to our customers more quickly, more features. But when we wanted to focus on the engineer, the benefits were that they were able to collaborate in different teams and collaborate in different um programming languages that they usually do on their teams. So the Intuit first time contribution site on the previous slide um, outlined projects that were actively looking for contributors. These projects um, signed up to the site and said, here are some of the issues that we have, and they could be on Jira or on GitHub, and they were good first issues that anybody could jump on and solve them. We also added an inner source batch to our intranet for those who have onboarded to inner source and were participating in the program. Um, this is kind of like a badge of honor. Now back to Alisa, who will talk about the engineering benefits that we saw with the program. Thanks, Rocio. Now you heard about, you know, the benefits for at a high level for engineers. We also wanted to let you know that many engineers told us that by allowing us, uh, allowing engineers to contribute to other repos, they were actually investing in their craft and that they were learning new skills. Um, and in addition to the engineers, there were other stakeholders that really do benefit. The other one is our internal and external co um, customers. And our customers definitely said that, wow, the, the, the products, not only are they delightful, but when there's a problem, you get that fix out right away. Now, for the business, Rocio did mention the business earlier. For the business, um, not only was there speed in delivering solutions and, and products to customers, but there was definitely higher engagement from our engineers or from product development teams. And we believe that that, and we're starting to see, um, you know, um, some data on this, but we believe that higher engagement leads to higher, higher retention of top tech talent. And this is our final slide. Um, we are, we'd love to share with you the resources that, you know, might also inspire you to take on this model or maybe enhance the model you currently have, um, your inner source model in your company. The first is the book that I mentioned called Heard by Mark Earls. And this is all about how do you tap into the social nature of beings, including human beings, um, in order to actually create a movement, in order to actually create change. The second is inner source commons. We took a lot of inspiration from the le learnings and best practices that they shared. We also wanted to make sure, I know Rocio kind of touched on it, but fun has to be in a lot of the things that you do. I mean, Rocio talked about how we went to different sites and did the rah-rah, but we have to infuse fun. And we loved how um, when we looked at Made With Code, they had a section under community and we love some of their ideas there. We've definitely adopted those. And finally, this is all about change management. Rocio mentioned it, that yes, tech is there, but so much of it is mindset and so much of it is definitely about community. And so we recommend this book by the Heath brothers called Switch, How to Change Things When Change is Hard. And you probably, um, you know, based on what you've heard, you probably, probably heard the three parts to that book, which is the writer, the visionary, the elephant, which is the emotional impact or the emotional, you know, um, embodiment of what you're trying to do. And lastly, the path that you are trying to, you know, get people to go on. And with that said, we, um, would love to thank you 